tell me about what's happening with Liz Truss. She was Prime Minister for mm. about five minutes. She's always been seen as a bit of a wet from the sort of the left of the Tories, but she seems to now be cozying up to Nigel Farage, suggesting he again becomes active politically. And uh, what's happening there? Because uh, I do look at the British political scene and, and worry about what op choices people have. You've, you've got the Tories who've been hopeless for so long and they really are faux conservatives and then you've got Labor who uh, have really gone radical left. So yeah, tell me about the upcoming election and whether Nigel Farage will feature. So Liz Truss has been quite vocal in her support for Nigel Farage to come back to the Conservative Party because I think like 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 many other Conservative MPs, they see that the writing of them is on the wall. They're expected to lose the next election in a big way. Uh, Liz Truss is going to launch this week her popular Conservative movement, which is supposed to be a pressure group within Parliament amongst Conservative MPs to put pressure on Rishi Sunak's government, particularly when it comes to issues like immigration and taxation. Um, so this is a this is a group that she is uh, spearheading, and, and she's made it very clear that not only will she not be silenced, even though she was only prime minister for all of forty five days, really, um, but she's also trying to raise the flag for for conservatives that can see what is going wrong in the country and are not willing to be silent about it. Now, obviously, trying to get uh, Nigel Farage on board is a very wise move. This is a man who, who was behind Brexit. He has a lot, lot of grassroots support in the traditional um, sort of Tory voter communities. Um, and, you know, she's been speaking, she's going to be speaking, and she has been speaking at CPAC this week. Nigel Farage is also going to be speaking as well. So they've been cozying up kind of on the American um, speaking circuit uh, and, and kind of making the case for for conservatism, not just in the UK, but obviously in the developed world as well. They're very pro-Trump. They're very um, sort of controlled borders, uh, high economic growth, all, all those sorts of things. And um, so it kind of it seems like a match. And really, it's kind of the Tories' last hope. I mean, like you said, there's really not much difference between the conservatives and the Labour Party at the moment. It's just they're, they're both kind of the poor man's Blair imitation act. Um, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, right. Just just quickly before we go, I'm going to play you this clip of Liz Truss basically saying that uh, she never, even as Prime Minister, she never got to run the country. Have a quick listen to this. What I found out when I got into number 10 is I thought that if I got to the top of the tree, I would be able to implement those Conservative policies. So and what I discovered was that I was not holding the levers. The levers were held by the Bank of England, by the Office of Budget Responsibility, they weren't held by the Prime Minister or the Chancellor. And I think that's a massive, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a massive hang problem. On, hang on. So there we go, mm -hmm. Esther. She's saying she never had... Uh, Eve, the Prime Minister of Britain doesn't hold the levers of power. Um, so that's why we need Nigel Farage. I'm with you. We need Nigel Farage and number 10 to sort them all out. Esther Cracker, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders, and we'll chat again soon.